The quest for Noah brings us to the world of genetics. It is in our genetics that we can best answer the question of ancestry. It is our genes, our traits that are inherited sperm and egg. Not a fossil, not geography, but again, genes and traits. We have discovered our last Y chromosomal ancestor, Noah, directly in the genomes of living human beings. The Y chromosome is uniparentally inherited DNA. This means that it is passed down on one side, and in this specific case, the father's line. This means the Y chromosome is paternally inherited. It turns out that we only find one male Y chromosome. Every single male Y chromosome on the planet is nearly identical and can be traced back to a single ancestor who is Y chromosome Noah. So let's throw the data up on a probability standpoint and look to see if it fits anything that we know from science. Well, it does. It fits what's called a power law curve with an R square of 0.95, which means 95% of the data points fall along a scientifically predictable slope. And it's not by chance. And when then you join that probability, that observation, and by the way, it's the probability of that line and the slope existing is like into the quadrillions. When I would testify an expert, all you need to is to hit the 5% level of chance. Well, this thing's way beyond the 5% level, level chance. It's in the point zero 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 zero. Something's going on with this power law curve, right? What's happening to the lifespans? They're exponentially decreasing. You guys, it's a perfect fit. Found on the East Coast when Europeans arrived, has claimed to have this red record, this Wallum Olam. What I want our viewers to see is how this record reads. I'm of course going to read the English translation of it, just to see that this is rather different. So let's start with book one, the opening lines of this red record. So this book begins with, at the beginning, the sea everywhere covered the earth. Above it extended a swirling crowd, cloud, and within it the great spirit moved. Primordial, everlasting, invisible, omnipresent, the great spirit moved. And if you've read the Bible, you might say this sounds a lot like Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. And indeed, this book, this, this red record, describes a very clear creation account, bringing forth the sky, the earth, the clouds, the heavens, bringing forth the day, the night, the stars, bringing forth all of these to move in harmony. So you have echoes here of Genesis chapter 1. Average age before the flood is 912, according to the Bible. So the short answer, why did they live so long? <clears throat> they had a perfect genetic code. They had a perfect diet. God told them what to eat, fruit, vegetables, and seeds. They had perfect soil and probably covering 90% of the earth. They had increased air pressure. They also had filtered sunlight. It's not just the Bible that teaches that they lived a long time. Many cultures have legends of a golden age. There's historical evidence and there's biblical evidence that man used to live a lot longer. You've said that there, you think there's a good chance there's a person alive today that might live to be a thousand. I think it's possible that we could see really extraordinary lifespans. We could even see people living as long as a thousand years. Did you know there's approximately five or six thousand years of recorded human history? Writing was invented around 3300 BC, Sumerian cuneiform on clay tablets in the Mesopotamia Valley. Today that's Iraq. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, an astrophysicist, said it was here around 5,000 years ago between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers that we learned how to write. Richard Overy wrote in the Times Complete History of the World, no date appears before the start of human civilizations around 5,500 years ago and the beginning beginning of a written or pictorial history. So let's round it out to 6,000. 6,000 years is not that long. How many of you have met someone who's lived 100 years or maybe close to a grandmother? We're talking 60 grandmothers and you're all the way back to the beginning of recorded human history. Though the Edomites make appearances throughout several books of the Bible, that archaeological proof of something that first appeared in the book of Genesis can be found is pretty astonishing. 